Hi, everyone. I think most of you know me. I looked at the class roster and I knew, um, I think I knew everybody. In case somebody added late um, and you don't know me, I am Sheila. And um, we will be working together this summer in the statistics class. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is just go over your course project. Please don't be alarmed. Um, there's a pretty detailed description and it looks long and it is, but it's broken down by weeks. So that's why there are so many pages in the project description. Please don't look, I mean, if you want to read the summary, which is just a page, it's the first page, and then maybe look at the first week or so, you know, do that. But I think if you're looking at week five or week six, you're going to look at the terminology and the requirements and you're going to panic and I don't want you to do that. So if you want to look ahead, go ahead, but please don't panic. And in fact, I would advise that you don't look ahead too much. Um, I'll explain the project and how it's going to work in this video, and I'm going to show you how to use Zoom, which is one of the requirements for the project. It's very easy to use. Um, I promise you, and those of you who know me, which like I said, I think all of you do, should know that I am will do anything I can to support you. Um, we have um, Rob Drulard, who is our IT director, um, is aware of this project and the way that I'm integrating technology into it. And he said, um, you know, we went through some resources, which I give to you in the project description. Um, so you'll see my demonstration of it, and then you'll also have it in written um, in the description. And then you'll also have a resource. So if you have questions, you can, there's like a kind of a frequently asked questions type of page where you can go um, and look at those. Um, the frequently asked questions, or I don't think it's called that, but it's like that. Um, you can see a written description or you can do a video tutorial. And again, this information is in the project description. And then Rob also said that if you run into difficulty, he is more than happy to help you too. He's aware of the project and he said that he can, um, definitely support um, the students in this class as they work through the project. So please know that um, although the course, of course, it's statistics, I'm sure it is going to be challenging for most of you. Um, even if it doesn't end up being challenging, I'm going to kind of assume that you're pretty intimidated by it. Um, there's going to be a final exam. Um, the project, which is broken into weeks, so it's not, you're going to do the project in parts. Um, and then the, the final part, you'll have to do a little bit of extra work. Um, but not much. And then you'll have weekly assignments that are just based on each chapter. Um, those are to make sure that you understand what is going on in each chapter and doing the weekly exercises. They're essentially homework assignments that are based on the chapters um, will help to prepare you for your final exam. And I also will give you a study guide before the final. So please don't panic. Like I said, you've got plenty of support. Um, my goal with this is to make sure that you're prepared to start your project. So for the project, you're actually going to carry out the back end of a research project. So methods, we talked a little bit about, or you should have talked about, for those of you who didn't have me, um, the integration and the role of theory. In my classes, we're required to integrate theory into either a research proposal or a research brief, depending on when you had me. Um, we're not doing that in statistics. And then methods, obviously, focused on methods, you know, sample, data collection, um, variables and measures, and things like that. This class, we are going to look at variables and measures. That's where methods and statistics overlap, and it is imperative. You will not be able to succeed in this class unless you understand levels of measure, which are the nominal, ordinal, and interval ratio. So although you should have had that in methods, we will go over it again in statistics, and I, am, I will be drilling it all semester because if you don't know what level of measure a variable is, you're not going to know what statistic to run. So that's really imperative. Um, so you will do the variables and measures for your project. Um, but for the most part, you're going to focus on data collection, which is fairly straightforward. Um, data entry, which is very easy. Um, data analysis, which gets a little bit more challenging, but we're not going to do any very sophisticated analysis for this project. Um, we're just doing basic descriptive stuff, which I actually have my method students do. Um, and then bivariate analysis, which I also require my method students to do. So it'll be a little bit more involved because the statistics and the interpretation um, is a lot more relevant for statistics than it was for methods. Um, but many of you have been exposed to this in methods. And if you haven't been, don't panic. It's not it's challenging, but not unmanageable at all. And then you'll have to interpret your analysis. 
So for the project, you're actually going to be carrying out the back end of a research project, primarily from data collection on. Um, and then the best way to learn, and I say this in the syllabus, is to teach. So what I'm going to have you do is carry out this research project, but your, the project itself is you teaching what you're doing. And this will make more sense as we go. So you will be working with SPSS and you're going to be working with Zoom, which is what I'm doing now. I'm, this video conferencing system is Zoom. And you might use other programs too. I mean, it just depends on how you put your project together. Your final deliverable will be a lesson plan. How you deliver that lesson plan is entirely up to you. The seven parts will all be done via Zoom. So you will have to do some stuff in SPSS and you will be sharing what you do in SPSS and I'm going to show you how to do that. But you're, what you're going to be turning in each week is a video presentation. Um, so each week for seven weeks, you're going to be, it'll be 10 points per video. Your final project, the lesson plan, can be another Zoom video. It can be a PowerPoint presentation. It can be a YouTube video. I give you a bunch of suggestions. You can do whatever you're comfortable with. Um, you are going to be submitting your projects through OneDrive, not on Canvas. Um, Canvas, I was in touch with their help desk, and it just seemed like it was going to end up being very complicated. So I'm going to have you submit your projects using OneDrive, and I give you instructions for doing that. It's really easy. You log into Webmail. Um, you go into OneDrive, and I tell you how to do that. You click, you upload your video, you click share, you type in my email address. It's very straightforward. So none of this, even if it's new to you, don't be intimidated. It's following like three to five very easy steps. So um, the second part of your project summary, which is um, under your course project description, talks about how to familiarize yourself with Zoom. So I'm going to actually show you what to do, and I'm going to be doing this each week. So each week, you're going to have the written description of what you're required to do. So you can see um, week one. I can hold this up. Um, sort of. It's backward because um, I'm holding it up from... Um, you know, it's facing my computer camera, so it's backward. But you can see that that says week one. It's, the, it's your project description week one. So you'll see that description in writing. And then each week, I also have Zoom discussions explaining what to do and demonstrating what to do. So I'm going to model and use an example of my own to show you exactly what you should be doing. So if you read the description and you are overwhelmed or confused, um, or something isn't clear, um, you will have an explanation, a video explanation that I'm going to provide, and also um, an example. So I will be doing exactly what you're doing, just using different variables. Um, and so you can see exactly what I expect from you, and all you will need to do is model what I do. So there should be very little guessing in all of this. What I'm going to do now is just I want to demonstrate to you how to use Zoom. So what you're going to do is, and I'm actually going to share my screen to show you this. So let's see. Um, I'm clicking share screen, but I'll show you this in a second. All right. Um, and then I want to... Okay, so you should be able to see my screen, and what I'm going to do, and again, you have these instructions written down, but I'm going to follow my own instructions so you can actually see how it's going to work. So you're going to go to ucdenver.zoom.us, and then, okay, it's going to bring you, I'm already logged in, it's going to, it should bring you to a screen, and you're going to click sign in. And when you sign in, you'll use your UC Denver credentials to sign in. Um, you're going to go in my meetings, which is right here, and that should default. Um, and again, this is written down. So the default is this personal meeting room. So you should see this. Um, and then you're going to, over here, instead of join, yours is going to say start. Mine doesn't say start because I'm already in Zoom recording this. So mine says join. Yours is going to say start. You're going to click start, and then you're going to see an option. And I can't, if I click join, um, it's going to tell, it, 
it thinks that there's a host to the meeting and there's not, so I'm not going to be able to follow the steps from here. But basically, when you click start from here, at least let me just, I don't think this is going to work, but let me try. No, it, mm -mm, it didn't. Okay, so when you click start, um, you, it's going to bring up a screen and it's going to say join, join audio or test audio. If it's the first time you've used Zoom from that particular machine, you want to test the audio. Um, if you use the same laptop every week, then you don't need to, I mean, you can test the audio, it's not a big deal, but you don't have to. So if you're using your same laptop um, each week, then it's fine, you don't need to test the audio each week. Um, once you test it, then you're just gonna click join audio. You need to make sure you're at a computer with a camera and with SPSS. SPSS came, with, or if you, assuming you got the correct textbook package, um, the student version came with the textbook package, so make sure that you load SPSS onto the computer that you're going to be doing your video presentations from because you're going to need to share your screen with SPSS on it. So for, your, for the computer that you're going to use for the summer, make sure it has a video camera, a microphone, and it's one that you have SPSS on. Um, so once you join audio, then you'll see yourself come up. The video is automatically enabled, and then you're going to see a big record button in the bottom right. You're just When you're ready to record your presentation, you're just going to click record, and it's going to automatically start recording. At the bottom, you're also going to see a share screen button, which is what you're going to need to use when you're showing me how to do SPSS. You're going to want to share your screen the way I shared my desktop, this screen, to show you what to do. So you're going to, the way that I can show you what happens if I click join, you're going to click things on SPSS and you're going to be showing me. <clears throat> so if you're, if this is SPSS, then you might say, um, here, in fact, let me pull up, um, let's do YouTube. So if I was showing you how to use YouTube, then I would say, oh, let's search for a video on serial killers. And I'm showing you, notice you can hear me describing what I'm doing as I'm showing it. You're going to do this with SPSS. You're going to say, look, you're going to click analyze as you're clicking analyze. Then you're going to click frequency and you're going to click frequency. So you're going to be teaching me essentially how to use SPSS by sharing your screen. So using YouTube as an example, if I'm showing someone how to search and I say, okay, we're going to search for serial killer documentaries. So what you do is you go to youtube.com. Then you go in the search bar and you type keywords, serial killer documentary. Then it's going to bring up a bunch of serial killer documentaries. And look, you can go to the scroll arrow and scroll down. And if we wanted to watch um, a 43-minute documentary on Robert Brown, then you would just click that and it plays. When you're ready to close out of that, then you click X. When you are ready to stop sharing, I'm sure everyone can see the desktop now, um, then you would click stop share and it brings you back. So when you're working, showing me SPSS or if you want to show me a PowerPoint slide, you can, you share your screen um, and there was the button which you should have seen that said stop share and you just click stop share when you're ready to come back and just have you on the screen again. Um, if that share screen button is in the bottom center, it's big and green, you're not going to miss it. Um, when you're ready to share something different, you would click share screen and go back. So you can go back and forth between sharing what you're doing, like with SPSS, or just me seeing you um, talk. So once you are done with your video, you're going to click stop recording. At that point, Zoom will automatically download your video file and it automatically saves it into a Zoom folder which goes to the documents folder of the computer. Do not panic. It doesn't tell you, um, it doesn't save it to your desktop. It's not obvious. You have to know to go to your doc, the documents folder on your computer. There it creates a Zoom folder. Your video file is in that Zoom folder. Once you have created your video, you're going to go, hold on one second here, um, sorry, 
I'm going to share my screen again to show you how to use OneDrive. You're going to, this is how you're going to turn in your assignments. So, um, okay. Um, okay. Um, you are going to go to your email address, or I'm sorry, your email, ucdenver.edu. Um, links, webmail. You're going to go to your webmail. And then right by Office 365, and again, this is all written down for you, you're going to see this little kind of grid icon. Go to that grid icon, find the OneDrive. Go to OneDrive. It's going to bring this up. Then what you're going to do is go to Upload. Then you're going to find your video file. So I'm just going to find, I'll upload the course project. Um, assignment description. Double click it, but you're going to double click your video. So you're going to go to doc, the, my documents, the Zoom folder, your video. Then it's going to appear on this list. You're going to click it. Then you're going to click share. Then it's going to ask you, you're inviting people. See right here? The only person you need to invite is me. So you're going to type in my email address, sheila.huss at ucdenver. Dot edu. Leave it so that I can edit it. If you need to tell me something, go ahead, you can. Um, leave this box checked. Um, yep. Yes. Um, blah, blah. Not sure. Oh, okay, that's what it wanted. Um, blah, blah, and then you're going to click share. And then it, I'll get an, a message saying that you shared a video. Um, I'm going to delete this just because I don't, I don't want to share it. But you're not, don't you delete it. You should leave yours there. Um, so now I'm going to stop share. And it's back to me. So I hope that this made some sense. It's actually really straightforward. And hopefully between my description, the written description, and if you get stuck, I gave you a website link. I gave you um, Rob's email address. And like I said, he, he knows what you guys are doing. And he knows that it's a statistics class and that, you know, there can be um, some challenges and some frustrations. So please do not hesitate to contact him. He'd be happy to help. Um, I'm not real good with the technological aspects of things. I'm still, uh, you know, I'm learning a lot of this too. You're free to contact me, of course. Um, I just don't know that I'm going to be the most um, efficient person um, in terms of getting you a response. So it might be easier to try to look at the website I gave you or then contact Rob. But like I said, this stuff is pretty straightforward. Um, the, I tried to make the instructions as simple as I could. And each week I'll be doing separate videos like this, giving you instructions and sharing my screens so that you can model what you do after what I do. So I'm looking forward to a great summer with you guys, and I um, definitely can't wait to see your projects. So um, just look for the first um, assignment description, you know, make sure you read over it and then listen to or watch the video and listen to it and see what you think and just let me know if you have any questions. So now to stop the recording, um, if the bar doesn't appear on the bottom with the options, just move your cursor and it'll appear. Um, and I'm going to hit stop recording now and then it's going to upload and then I'll, I'm going to share my videos on Canvas, but you should share yours using that OneDrive because Canvas isn't going to have the space for everybody to upload all of their assignments, their Zoom assignments into the course shell. So I can do it as the instructor, but they ask that you guys not because they think that we're going to run out of space. So I'm going to stop recording now and then I'm going to upload my video um, to, to Canvas.